morning. I'm Greg Alvarado and back to share with you a few more tips about risk-based inspection and uh, how to really get the maximum value and the benefit out of RBI in, in the way of metrics. Um, a lot of people don't understand the term risk in square feet per year. It's really a very simple term, but a very powerful term that's in the API RP581 risk-based inspection methodology. So today, we're going to get rid of the mystique around that so we can enable you and empower you to be able to use the real metrics behind it. So you can get beyond just doing RBI, not to go inside of a piece of equipment, and actually use it to begin trending your risks and identifying best practices within a corporation, within a plant, and to know that you're moving in the right directions with the decisions you're making about your fixed equipment reliability program. So let's get rid of the mystique around this term, risk in square feet per year. And, and actually, it is quite simple. So let's start, for instance, with probability of failures. We hear terms about probability of failure, like one times 10 to the minus three, one times 10 to the minus four, and so forth. So the way I'm gonna teach this today is by using some actual examples. So first of all, I wanna stress that in order to have a really effective RBI program, you've gotta be consistent about the way you apply it. If you're consistent about the way you apply it across your plant and across your corporation, then you're gonna be able to use these metrics to help you identify best practices and help you identify areas of vulnerability based on issues that occur in other plants and other places. So let's start now. So let's pretend I have a reactor and I've uh, done a risk analysis and of course, the 581 technology looks at consequences in terms of radiant areas, for instance, of heat exposure in the case of a failure or an event. Uh, it'll look at that radiant area and say, what's the perimeter uh, based in, for instance, heat BTUs per hour for equipment damage and for fatality. It'll also calculate areas for pressure wave and, and shrapnel exposure for equipment and for people or fatality. It'll also calculate toxic area for fatality. And the way that it's designed, while it calculates all those areas, the default is to go toward whatever is the highest. So let's pretend in this case, we're talking about a reactor that's got some bad stuff in it, hydrocarbons, hydrogen sulfide. And let's say the worst case scenario is a toxic exposure area of 10,000 square feet. So we have a 10,000 square foot area of potential toxic exposure. Now, let's take a look at the probability of fail for that piece, failure for that piece of equipment. Let's say it's a brand new piece of equipment and the probability of failure is uh, one times 10 to the minus six or one in one million years. Okay, this is the same as one times 10 to the minus six. So, when the algorithm calculates the risk in terms of square feet per year of risk today, this means I have 0 0.01 square feet per year of risk. 10,000 into 1 million. So it's 0.01 square feet per year of risk. Now, let's pretend we don't do anything to that piece of equipment. We continue operating it like that. Operating conditions don't change, but we don't inspect it. And so over time, as that equipment degrades, the consequence stays the same, but the probability of failure goes up to one times 10 to the minus four, or, one in 10,000 years. So I went from a lower probability of failure to two orders of magnitude higher. This simple equation then comes out to one square foot per year of risk. So now we can see that over 10 years, our risk has gone up two orders of magnitude from 0.01 square feet per year of risk to one square foot per year of risk. That being said now, you can apply this type of technology to every piece of equipment. If you have issues, you can go back and compare 
risks. You can trend equipment. You can dive very quickly into what the risk drivers are so you can identify air, other areas of vulnerability that you may have in your plant based on failures you may have seen someplace else. You can also identify best practices. You can say, wow, you know, why are my probabilities of failure on this type of heat exchanger so much lower here and so much higher there so that you can identify best practices, get those implemented and do a much better job of managing your risks and your fixed equipment reliability program. Thanks a lot for joining me today. I hope I explain this well for you so you can get out there and start playing with these metrics, understanding them. Remember to be very consistent about how you implement risk-based inspection. It is relative risk after all. You don't want to lose that consistency. Uh, we've added some links to articles related to this at the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We hope to have you back again.